Good morning, everybody. After playing a whole bunch of different types of characters with my brand new character, Strim Tom, I decided enough is enough. We gotta go fast. Now, the thing about going fast is that there's a lot of different ways to do it. Are we talking about movement speed? Are we talking about killing monster speed? Are we talking about treasure looting speed? These are all important questions. So I decided to say yes to all of them. And that's why we're playing Sorcerer. Now, as some of you might know, Sorcerer is basically one of my favorite classes, and I love this class. Sorcerer casts twice as fast as every single class in the entire game, meaning you just kind of blast out spells. Oh, there's a monster? I'll cast Fireball. Still alive? I'll cast a second Fireball. You really don't need to worry about your spell output because you also have more spell points than every other class, allowing yourself to basically get fully carried through the game based on your arcane might and arcane might alone. Additionally, once you move into the epic levels, sorcerers are fantastic because they just kind of ignore all immunities. You get an elemental form that allows you to say, hey, you're made of fire? Well, I'm going to hit you with fire and you're still going to take damage, which to me is just super satisfying. Now, granted, I do think that they could probably do some work on how the mechanic works because I think that just bypassing could be a little bit more interesting. In general, it just makes it so easy and fun to play. Since sorcerers just do so much damage during the leveling process, and you can just spam spells, this also means you have a lot of points to spend in all sorts of different trees, such as falconry for faster movement speed, or your racial tree for all sorts of different abilities, or the eldritch knight tree granting you extra hit points and physical and magical resistance rating. As such, this character was kind of insane in terms of the leveling speed, because I'm so used to playing stuff that isn't just blow it all up sorcerer, and... That's why I went with cold. Cold is chilly and frozen. It doesn't go quite as fast as other things, and I figured, hey, why not give it a shot? I thought to myself that maybe there would be some trouble. You see, cold does happen to have a lot of natural immunities during the leveling process. Skeletons happen to be immune to cold often, and they're everywhere in the early game. The first 10 levels are littered with skeletons. In fact, almost every single quest ends up containing them. I think over half of the quests below level 10 have skeletons in them. You would think this would be a major problem, and so did I. However, it ended up not being that big of a deal. And one of the main reasons is that Sorcerers can specialize in more than one spell type. You can specialize in cold spells, which is what I did, but you can also specialize in either acid spells or lightning spells. Now, both of these are interesting options. Of course, you can't be fire, which is the opposite element. However, lightning has a cool secondary spell, and that is Sonic Blast. You see, Air Savant gets bonuses to Sonic spells. Sonic Blast is a level 1 spell that for some reason does more damage than Fireball used to do back before 48.4 the update that made all of the spells in the game effectively viable. This means that for all the lower level quests, when you need Area of Effect, you just cast Sonic Blast. All it takes is one single point in the Air Savant tree, and you can Sonic Blast your way all the way through to level 10. Literally all the way through to level 10. One single spell, and that's all it takes. You don't need anything else, just Sonic Blast. Now, of course, it's faster to kind of weave in some other spells, so I did, but this makes it so that every single time I fight a monster that's immune to cold, I can just overcome it with some Sonic damage. This is made even better when you get to level 9, which is when I pick up Shout. I don't pick up Shout at 8 just because I find I like getting Dimension Door right away. I find Dimension Door is great for fast leveling, allowing you to teleport back to the beginning of a quest, which while that might not seem as valuable when you get started, later on for going through quests quickly, you can skip objectives, skip different types of hard monster fights, or just instead of having to wait for the recall animation to take place where you just kind of wait for a bit and let yourself slowly leave, you just hit that dimension door and you're out of there. This isn't to say that Sorcerer doesn't have its weaknesses during the leveling process. The biggest weakness that it has is that Sorcerers have no way to inherently heal. If you need to heal on a Sorcerer, you could always play as a Warforged, allowing you to repair yourself, but there are a few problems. The first is that Sorcerers don't get to have access to all of the spells. You only get access to the spells that you pick when you level up. Picking repair spells means you have to give up on other spells that might do damage or defend you during the level up process. It's definitely worth it if you're playing a Warforged to do this, but it is something you have to consider if you want to have a few different spell types. Fortunately, the Cold Sonic approach means that Sonic Blast really covers all of the extra spells that you need, so if you wanted to try out this character and still be able to self-heal, you can do that, of course, as a Warforged and still have room for a lot of those spells, especially considering the third and fourth level spells where you can take Repair Serious and Repair critical aren't actually that good for either cold or sonic i mean shout obviously but you, you can just kind of move the spells around a little bit and it's not too big of a problem 
However, the other issue is that if you decide to play as a Warforged, well, when you get to level 20, you get your elemental form, and it's the most powerful thing for a sorcerer. But if you do decide to use that, you're no longer a Warforged. That's right, you don't heal from repair anymore because you're in elemental form, which means you actually just cast healing spells, which you get easily in Epic, so you don't have to struggle to find them, but it does mean you now have to carry around that minus two charisma for being a Warforged. Although a good benefit of being Warforged is adamantine body, which means you have all sorts of armor, and really there's a lot of discussion back and forth as to whether you do want to go ahead and take the Warforged or not, so there's a lot of options. Especially in terms of race, I decided to go with Dragonborn, just because it grants me extra maximum cash levels for some more damage, and because my character doesn't have a lot of past lives, I wanted to keep my DCs up, and Dragonborn happens to grant a bunch of extra evocation DCs, as well as Conjuration and some more charisma, kind of pumping me up and making sure my spells could always land. In general, even with some of the slower problems, like the fact that you can't heal, my character had enough use magic device to be able to use cure critical wands and cure serious wands, as well as heal scrolls, thanks to taking wand and scroll mastery out of the Eldritch Knight tree pretty early to get myself some extra healing. But that's it. That's basically the only drawback I can think of of Sorcerer. If you happen to have a friend with you who likes playing Bard or any other class that generally tries to heal, your character is going to level so fast you won't even be able to believe it. It's actually kind of shocking. I've been playing a bunch of goofy melee, spending a bunch of time on Hardcore League, carefully creaking around doors, making sure I'm not pulling too much, and then the Sorcerer is like, ha ha ha, kaboom, kablam, just dropping spells everywhere, and you never need to think about what you're actually doing. Now, if you would like to play a sorcerer just like I'm doing, check out the build guide right here on how to do it. Ice Sorcerer. How do you go about making it and what makes this character strong? Well, let me tell you. First, Ice Sorcerer is all about charisma and constitution. You actually don't care about anything else. It's only charisma and constitution. All the other statistics are unimportant. Um, sure, you can have strength for some gear, maybe intelligence for some skills, but you don't need most of those things. So you want to make sure you're maxing out your charisma at all times on a sorcerer. Additionally, my saving throws can get a little bit better, although your reflex saves are usually going to be bad on a sorcerer pretty much every single time. Physical resistance rating and magical resistance rating can get up there, though, because sorcerers are you are special because they get to wear medium armor and shields, making them quite defensive, and pretty much every sorcerer does. This character does not. I actually only wear light armor, specifically because I wanted to make sure that my character was um, not spending too many points in the Eldritch Knight tree, so I could focus a little bit more on damage for the leveling process. As far as skills go, sorcerers do not need a whole lot of different skills. Um, Generally, just Spellcraft and Use Magic Device are kind of the important ones. I decided, since I had extra skill points and tomes, to go in with Bluff, as well as uh, Haggle and some Swim. Swim is mostly just for the joke. Uh, you get a lot of swim speed from playing as a water elemental, so I wanted to be able to just swim really fast, and that was about it. But Use Magic Device, very essential for all of your different... Um, healing abilities during the leveling process, as well as the ability to raise dead and remove different negative effects, and Spellcraft for your damage. As far as your feats go, I've become more accustomed to playing sorcerers as characters who are all in on damage, so grabbing all the metamagic feats, quicken, maximize, and empower, and then also ignoring all of those pesky and annoying abilities like um, enchantment spells and illusion spells. Yeah, they can be useful, but you know what else is useful? Evocation. So I actually just leveled this character taking evocation and basically nothing else, not using really any other different types of spell magic, um, and it worked pretty well. I had some mild crowd control spells, but for the most part, it was just evocation and blast, blast, blast away. As far as the epics moving in here, I picked up Wellspring of Power. This is basically one of the best feats you can get in the game for this type of character, especially if you're like me and you decide to play as a Draconic Incarnation, getting superpowered benefits. You basically press this button and do an insanely high amount of damage, and so it's highly recommended to use this when possible. Additionally, you can also focus on using a couple of the different other metamagic feats like Intensify and Embolden, both of which are quite good. And then moving on to your, uh, oh, Bristol Glacier Wrath also. Um, it's an ice spell, which is already fun and themed with this character, but also it is your evocation-based crowd control. Most crowd control spells in the game are going to be um, enchantment-focused and not evocation-focused. However, this character is quite good because as a purely evocation-focused character, it still allows you to crowd control some monsters and do some damage at the same time. Plus, it's that instant setup since this works on basically everything. I'm talking oozes. I'm talking uh, undead. Basically everything. As long as there's a physical body, ethereal creatures need not get frozen. And then for your legendary feet, Sign of the Plane of Water, it buffs up your ice damage. 
As far as spells go, you basically just take all the ice spells. Um, I did an epic reincarnation, so I got rid of a lot of lower level ones, but uh, Nyax, Cold Ray, uh, Snowball Swarm, Frost Lance, these are fantastic spells you want to take during the leveling process. However, right at level one, this spell, Sonic Blast, take this at level one and use this. Important note, cold spells, a lot of people think that they're not very good for the leveling because you're going to run into undeads and all sorts of monsters that just happen to be immune to cold. And that's true, you will. But Sonic Blast lets you ignore all of that. This spell does a tremendous amount of damage. It's more damage than original Fireball was back in the release of DDO, being a D6 plus one per level. And as long as you have a Sonic item, your character can breeze through basically anything. I use Sonic Blast all the way up through level 10 just for dealing damage to monsters that were immune to cold. And then by the time I took level 9, I took the spell Shout, which is what I used as a replacement. So taking Sonic Blast and Shout and just using those when monsters were immune to cold, it alleviated all my problems. I thought it was actually going to be difficult to level with this character, but it wasn't. It was very fast, it was very easy, and I can recommend it all day. And then of course, as you get to higher levels, take Kona Cold, take Autolux, these are cold spells, Polar Ray, and Iceberg. Outside of that, I just like having Prismatic Spray, because when you get faced into a room full of like 10 constructs this just blows them all up and gets rid of them iron golems go to he double hockey sticks i don't need you in my quests also your other nine spells are useless i don't cast any other level nine spells just iceberg and then also i never cast arcane tempest or sunburst so you could take other spells if you want basically just polar ray moving on to the enhancement tree what enhancement should you take? Well, for my character, I do have 82 points spent, but that's okay. I have extras spent in the tree. An important thing I want to mention here is that you always want to put at least one point into Air Savant. Just this one point gives you plus one cash level of your Sonic spells, which means that your um, Sonic Blast, as well as your Shout, will do a little bit more damage in the early levels. So just make sure you drop one point in here and take that out later. However, this is how I have it arranged. 41 points in the Water Savant tree, grabbing some of the penetration cold resistance, all of the crit, reduce cost to maximize, and reduce cost of quicken. Uh, my character around level 14 basically always had maximize turned on the entire time, because once you get this reduced cost, getting 150 extra spell power means you aren't casting two spells, you're only casting one, and with the reduced cost of maximize, it actually makes it so it costs significantly less um, to deal with on the back half. So I highly recommend you keep this on, keep maximize on, and get this reduced cost. Um, of course, planning your mana accordingly, but just, you know, keep that in mind. Then I put some points in Elder Knight just to grab Imbue the Blade here, and I ended up using a shield, so I took shield training. Depending on whether you use a shield or not, you may not need this, and in fact, I would recommend a staff at the end game, so you won't need shield training forever, but it was nice while leveling. And then, of course, Dragonborn over here. Dragonborn was great because it gives wet, white Dragon Breath, which is mediocre, but most importantly, Draconic Knowledge, which gives you plus two maximum cash level of all of your cold spells, which is a huge buff in damage, and plus three to all of your evocation and conjuration DCs. You only need the evocation. Fade Arc Illusionist was just kind of where the rest of my points went. Specifically, I took You've Got My Back and Charisma here for some extra physical and magical resistance rating because this is 10 PRR and MRR for casting shield and night shield spells I'm already casting. Um, so overall, a good mix and match of defense. If I was to change up a couple things here, you could if you want to drop the Pierce Cold Resistance, although I do like it. If you're somebody who already has extra mana, you don't need to manage it too much. You can just drop out of Efficient Quicken and max this instead to make sure you're actually penetrating as much Cold Resistance. It's important to note with these Sorcerer Savants, the capstone here, which says uh, you bypass all immunities and resistances, is not true. It bypasses all immunities. Resistances are different in Dungeons & Dragons Online and are not bypassed by these types of bypass effects. Similar Similarly with this, it does not bypass it. The only way to bypass elemental resistance, which is like, you know, if a monster has resist 20 or something, is with this type of effect here. So it's good to max out to increase your damage. As far as epic destinies go, you have a couple different options, and I actually tried two different things. I tried Draconic Incarnation and Magus of the Eclipse. Now, Draconic of the Incarnation, which is not what I was supposed to say, is very area of effect focused and really bumps up your individual sorcerer damage as well as spreading out some of your points. Reduction of spell point cost makes you have a much longer uh, spell casting ability. You can just keep casting spells in combat and also no more need for any type of materials while casting spells as well as getting temporary hit points. A lot more defensive as well. 
Additionally, Dragon Breath is just fantastic air effect damage on a short cooldown, and reduced cost of your different meta magic feats is great, as well as pull from the Wellspring, which makes this Wellspring a power effect. Remember that button I said that was like you press a button and you do a, a million billion damage? Yeah, now it lasts twice as long, and at level cap gives you 300 temporary spell points. It's good, and very good for raiding. However, Magus of the Eclipse which I can't show you, is also quite good and something to consider. It has higher single target damage because you get access to Ice or Zero Degree Comet, which is just like your most powerful spell, Iceberg. So you get two of them you can blast out. Additionally, you also get the Epic Strike, which allows you to stack vulnerability um, stacks on the target. Although bear in mind, it only applies one after the first use, but still it's better than nothing. But you also get the fantastic utility of Time Stop. And Time Stop is way better than this nonsense. Dragon Form, sure, you turn people to gold. You have spell cost reduction blah 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 time stop you press a button and the raid boss dies so kind of different comparative levels i'd say they're both very very good you also get more spell power out of magus of the eclipse than you do draconic so back and forth i think it depends on what you need are you more of a solo player do you find yourself not grouping as much or you don't really do a lot of raid content i think draconic incarnation is where i would probably settle i think it's just generally better but if you're somebody that is specializing and you want to go into certain types of raids you want to be a high raid dps while also kind of supporting the group then Magus of the Eclipse is something you would consider. And all in all for leveling Draconic over Magus, it just levels faster because area of effect is better than single target. Outside of that, you'll notice I have Sharadi over here and I didn't talk about it yet. Sharadi grants this Stay Frosty effect from the mantle, which makes it you have a 30% chance to do cold damage when you hit people with your spells. That's good. You just hit somebody with a spell and 30% of the time they take three D100 plus 100. That's just huge. That's more damage than any of your spells do. Um, and it applies to all of your attacks. So just cast your spells and you do a billion damage to people. So Sharadi is the mantle to go with. It is better than the Attune the Arcane in my opinion. Because one, you cast spells very quickly as a sorcerer, which is already good. Even though the damage looks comparable, you cast a lot more spells. And two, this damage over time effect is nice when you apply it to a boss. But it doesn't really matter for trash monsters. Because usually if you get the proc and you hit with your spell, the monster dies. This has a cooldown of 5 seconds, and this one does not, which means when you're generally just fighting stuff, you're going to be constantly getting this proc off, whereas this one is only once every 5 seconds. So I would much, for the leveling process, this is going to be better. I think against raid bosses, you can get away with a tune the Arcane instead, but again, it's going to be up to you. And then lastly, I just put points in a Primal Avatar for Rejuvenation Cocoon. Whether you want to use Primal Avatar for Rejuvenation Cocoon for healing, or you would like to go with something else like um, Unyielding Sentinel for some more hit points, uh, you can easily scrape a few points out of here, maybe drop the Epic Moment if you wanted, and even the Spell Power, and grab uh, the extra hit points out of Unyielding, get an extra 105 hit points from the cores, as well as Renewal and the Divine Energy Resistance. That's also a good option to kind of tank it up and get there. Now... As far as gearing goes, I actually didn't replace any of my gearing here, but you basically want to focus on a few things. One, cold and sonic spell power while leveling, as well as cold and sonic crit, anywhere you can get them, whether it's, you know, dual wielding borderland scepters or something, or just having a universal spell power is usually pretty good. Then you also want charisma items, items such as the gauntlets of innate, Ar uh, innate arcanum are very, very good from Ravenloft, granting charisma, evocation, quality charisma, and wizardry. And I actually use these all the way up to level 30 because what a good set of stats. This is all the offensive stats you basically need, which is sweet. Things that grant you physical and magical sheltering are also pretty nice. Like I have these boots crafted here, which gives me sheltering decks and insightful decks for some saves. Uh, you can also consider getting the Hallowed Castigators for your epic experience, because it's got insightful sheltering for the defense, and also healing stats, which is nice with your cocoon and what have you. But yeah, physical magical resistance rating, life, constitution, the basic stuff, just whatever you can get. Um, my gear is not too fancy. The only thing... I do want to bring up here, and I should have done this before, um, but I'm going to show you guys this one uh, here as I'm quickly Googling it on stream, is the Reflection of Wave Quarterstaff. Now, this item here is something that I think is very, very powerful and what I think you should be using if you're playing a Cold Sorcerer as your endgame weapon because you get this effect here. You can ignore most of the stuff. Paragon Cerulean Wave, that's on the Crown of Snow. Crit and Spell Power, blah, 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 blah. What matters... Greater Water Elemental Form. So quarterstaffs, you have to give up a lot to use a quarterstaff, so you need something nutty for it to be useful. And this is. If you are a Water Elemental, which you are, you benefit from five additional caster levels on your cold spells, as well as 50 exceptional cold spell power and 5% exceptional spell crit damage. Now, 
The reason, I think this is actually spell critical, not spell crit damage. This is a massive effect, very, very powerful. One of the highest increases in damage you can get on your character anywhere is this extra five cash levels. You really, really want this, so you're gonna wanna use this quarterstaff. It's also important to note, cool fact, that because you're playing as a draconic incarnation, if you decide to do that, you get double implement bonus of quarter staves that you wield. Now this grants a implement bonus of 29. However, if you get any buffs on your item, say you've got the enchant weapons past life or somebody casts enchant weapons on you, or you have other effects that increase your um, actual bonus on this weapon, it actually makes this even more powerful and grants you up to 30, 40 spell power just for two points. So very, very good. So keep that in mind. You're able to get yourself the Reflection of Wave. It's not the easiest staff to come by because you need five Schism Shards, which means you have to do some raiding and go run Killing Time and do all that. But a fantastic endgame weapon for every Cold Druid and Cold Sorcerer. It's pretty much his best in slot. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe here on YouTube and also go to you, uh, twitch.tv slash can't speak twitch.tv slash shrimp tom to get in on your opportunity to see this stuff happen live additionally there's also a video of me doing some of the leveling process if you didn't see any of the gameplay you don't know what this looks like i'll have a link in the description in case you missed that video to how this character actually plays and what's going on anyways that's what i got make sure you go outside and shovel the driveway because there's a lot of snow and i'm gonna go off camera goodbye i'm still on camera you can see me Thank you.